Today, we're looking at one of the classic physics kinematics problems. Uh, it's usually called cops and robbers, uh, but the general premise is the same. We have a bad guy, a lawbreaker, a ne'er-do-well, who is speeding by, uh, and it takes a moment for the law enforcement to uh, start chasing. And so the idea in these problems is like the bad guy is traveling at a constant speed, the good guy is traveling well, with a starting velocity of zero, but with an acceleration. And our objective is to determine when and where uh, the cop catches up to the robber, or in this case, the truck that is speeding through a school zone. So looking at what they've asked us to do, they want us to make this velocity versus time graph, and they've suggested you know, uh, the scaling uh, on the graph. So for the truck, it's really easy. It says that he's traveling at a constant speed of 20 meters per second. Um, for the first five seconds, the police car is going to remain at rest. So his graph is going to say zero for the first five seconds. And then it is going to accelerate. He is going to increase his speed by two meters per second for each second that he's allowed to travel. So his graph is going to look something like that. Okay. Um, a month ago ish, right? We talked about the intersection point on a position versus time graph. And we were like, oh, this, uh, intersection point, if this were a position versus time graph, it'd be really cool. Cause that's going to be like when and where they meet up, but this is not a position versus time graph. This is a velocity versus time graph. So this intersection point that they want us to label time T1, right? Is the moment where the two vehicles have the same speed. Okay. Now, this does not mean that they are in the same spot, all right? So for part B2, right, we're trying to analyze a position, right? So when you are explaining yourself on paper to a physics teacher, right, you should probably phrase your result in claim, evidence, and reasoning. So the first thing that you could do is make a claim, all right? So the claim would be that the police car is still behind the truck. All right, your claim is you answering the question. Um, for a more complicated thing, it might not be the claim that you start with. The order in which you do claim evidence reasoning doesn't really matter, all right, as long as all of the pieces are there. Um, so first you answer the question, or last you answer the question. Um, you always want to bring in the physics. That's what the reasoning is. So here, my physics knowledge, I know that for a velocity versus time graph, I know that this can be useful to, in determining displacement if I look at the area underneath uh, the velocity graph. All right, so that's a fact. It's like universal. For any velocity graph that you encounter, you know that the area under this curve uh, represents the displacement. Okay, uh, and then your evidence is something specific, like about this particular scenario, about this particular data that you have sitting in front of you. So. I probably went a little overboard here, right? But we can see that the area underneath the truck's graph, it makes a rectangle, right? This rectangle has a much larger area than the area of the triangle that's made by the police car's graph because, I mean, the triangle has a smaller base but the same height. So you probably don't have to say all that. I, I think, you know, for something as obvious as this, you can just say the area of the truck's graph is bigger than the, areas of the, car, the area of the car's graph, and that should be fine. Um, so yeah, if we did want to determine when and where they met up, right, we would be looking for the time when the two areas are the same. Um, and if we wanted to be very precise about this, we would have to set this up as an equation. So I know that this worksheet doesn't ask us to do that, but I want us to do that because it's going to be uh, useful for your assignment right after this. So we are looking for the time when the two positions are the same. So I could say that the displacement of the truck is going to be equal to the displacement of the police car at some time t, right? And so the shape that the truck's graph made under the curve was a rectangle, so base times height, right? The shape that the police car's graph made was a triangle, so one half base times height, right? And my, uh, my base on the triangle, it's modified a little bit. Right? It's a little bit smaller. It's smaller by some amount of time. It's, it's five seconds. But since I'm trying to solve this algebraically first, I'm going to just call it time TD. Right? So that is going to represent that five second head start that the, uh, the bad guy ended up getting. So this is all well and good. But when you think about 
how the area of the police car's graph changes over time. It's not that simple. That height is changing. So, like, I can't really just do one half base times height and, like, pick, like, a single velocity value because I don't know what that velocity value is going to be. So we need to write an equation for velocity of the police car as a function of time, right? So off of any velocity, if you try to do velocity graph, if you do y equals mx plus b off of it, you end up with that first uh, equation of constant acceleration. The v is equal to uh, at plus v naught or v naught plus at, right? So for reasons that are going to become obvious momentarily, I'm going to modify that a little bit. Uh, instead of having a y-intercept, I'm going to say that this is just like a standard linear function that passes through 0, 0, except I'm going to shift it over to the right. So that's what's going on with like the, the parentheses, right? Acceleration times parentheses t minus td. I've effectively shifted uh, my baseline linear function five units to the right, okay? So by doing that, I can now take this, plug this back in, right, to my little triangle formula. I'm going to clean this up, right? I did that so that I could combine my t minus td together. So I do that. I plug in some numbers. I grab my trusty calculator. Uh, I usually, you know, make the graph with like y equals and I find the zero there. So the first zero is no good, right? That's going to be um, the first time that the speeder passes the cop right, which the cop is not catching him yet, right, that's going to happen later. So the second solution to this quadratic equation uh, happens at time equals 29.14, okay, and that's going to be when the cop catches up, right? We could then determine where they meet up. You could take that and you could pop that back in uh, to the truck's displacement, right? Do 29.14 multiplied by the truck's speed of 20, right, and that can... Uh, the, that's the fastest way for you to determine the location right, of their meetup. You could plug the same thing into the police car's equation as well, but I mean, that's obviously a more complicated one than just straight up multiplying it by 20. So this process was important because um, we, in this process, have made a model for the truck's position, the, the cop's position, and the cop's velocity, all as functions of time. So if we were to mm, perhaps do this in real life with our constant velocity buggies and our fan carts, we would be able to easily kind of set up the same kind of framework in order to determine, you know, when and where they would meet up based on like your car's unique, you know, constant velocity or your fan carts at unique uniform acceleration. So take note of those three equations that I have highlighted. You are going to use those soon okay um finishing up this workbook page though the last page i thought was pretty straightforward right um carlos has made a pretty good looking position graph uh, angela certainly loves it she sees nothing wrong with this um we should probably elaborate a little bit more on like why angela likes this graph so much so again it's kind of with, like the claim evidence reasoning thing right? She's claiming that this graph is good because it's a curve, right? And okay, yeah, the evidence says, yes, that it's a curve, that this curve starts shallow and ends up steep, right? The reason why that is important uh, is because the slope of this position versus time graph, the slope of any position versus time graph is going to represent velocity. So when we see a slope going from a shallow slope to a steep slope, that's always going to represent an object that is speeding up, which is what is going on uh, in this scenario. Um, Blake, yeah, okay, very nitpicky. He does point out that this graph is supposed to be shifted to the right uh, by five. And by shifted to the right, we don't mean like a full on like smiley face parabola. It should be zero for the first five seconds and then whoop, uh, swoop upwards, right? In this parabolic path.